folks, this is Scott again with Wisconsin River Outings, and I just want to take a little time to talk about uh, packing for an overnight trip. Now, the gear that's here is about a reasonable amount of gear for either a light two-night trip or a pretty good provisioned overnight trip with one canoe and two people. First, let's talk about packing philosophy. Let's keep in mind that this is an outdoor experience. We're not trying to bring your home out onto the river. The objective is not to see how much gear we can get in the canoe. The objective actually should be how much gear can you do without. I mean, if we're looking at an overnight trip, you're on the river for 24 hours. There are a lot of things that you can do without over a 24 hour period and for that matter even stretching into a two and three day period. Probably the most important things that you need to be thinking about are making sure that you have enough food and then hopefully you have higher quality gear that will pack smaller and we'll get more into that next. Okay so starting on my left We've got two chairs, two camp chairs, two sleeping mats for the two people that'll be on this trip. We've got a hat, which is important in these hot summer days, keep the sun off your head. And we also highly recommend bringing a light cotton long sleeve shirt. So that way if the sun still gets to you, you've got something to at least get out of the sun. There's not a lot of shade on the river. So having something to block that sun will be helpful. Both of these are closed bags, so that way everything's consolidated. Uh, one for me, one for my paddle partner. A small first aid kit. Rain gear. Rain gear is very important. There's a saying that there is no bad weather, just bad gear. Not bringing rain gear is not a good idea. Um, especially in Sauk City where you are at, I hate to put it this way, the mercy of our bus pickups. If it starts to rain, our bus pickups still run at the same time, so if you're not prepared for the rain, you're going to be wet. Two sleeping bags that pack fairly small. Um, you know, you, staying away from the uh, Coleman or the very cheap um, Walmart sleeping bags is a is a, a good way to go. Stay, get a bag that costs around 100 bucks. Take care of it. You'll have it forever, and it packs smaller and tighter. Here's our uh, tent, which is actually a three-man, three-season tent. Some miscellaneous things like hand sanitizer, uh, sunscreen, and insect repellent. I've got a headlamp, um, saw for cutting my own firewood if that's what I want to do. Don't bring a hatchet. A hatchet does no good. You need something to be able to take logs that are two or three inches around and cut them in half. You're going to be hatcheting for a long time if you do that. Um, a shovel for any number of things, among them human waste. Um, water jugs, two different varieties here. Um, this is an inexpensive dry box. This had some candies in it. You can put spices, your camera, your phone, your wallet into here. Close this up, and if by chance you go in the drink, this will float and all of your gear will stay dry inside of it. This is my little camp stove, camp stove, butane, a small pot to heat water with, and a measuring cup, all in the same bag so it's easy to grab and find. And then finally, a cooler. Uh, not a gigantic cooler. Our objective is not to see how many cases of beer we can bring with, but a reasonable amount to enjoy ourselves. And then finally a dry bag. And next, we'll show you how to pack that dry bag. So, we've got our dry bag. I've gone ahead for time's sake and uh, taken the two sleeping mats, put them inside and opened them up so there's a hole in the middle. I'm going to take our sleeping bags, drop those in. And then making sure I fill up all the room around the sides, I'm going to take my first clothes bag and stick that in and all the way down uh, my canoe mate's clothes bag. 
put that in and put it all the way down. I am going to grab our cooking kit and put that in. First aid kit so it's up near the top where it's accessible in case we need it. Uh, rain gear, again up near the top so it's accessible. And then the last thing to go in will be insect repellent and uh, sunscreen. And then I'll just close this bag up. Um, remember that you don't want to put your, uh, your tent inside of a dry bag. The poles and the stakes and that kind of thing can uh, lead to a puncture. As well as once you set up a tent, it'll dry out rather quickly. So there's really no reason to put that inside, uh, inside a dry bag. So those two buckles go on the sides. And then these go over the top. And our gear will arrive at its destination as dry as it is when it started. Alright, so we're back for our final segment. Um, we're going to go ahead and load the canoe. One of the things you want to be thinking about when you load a canoe is trimming it and you want it to be balanced. So if you have a much heavier paddler in the stern than you do in the bow, you want to try and load as much weight forward as possible. So I'm going to go ahead and start loading this boat up. Our heaviest piece of gear is actually our cooler. So the first thing I'm going to put in is that. And you'll notice that we've put on our uh, seat backs that we have available for rent also. And our two chairs we'll put right behind the stern paddler here. And there you go, a loaded canoe. It's not mounded. We still have available space for feet, and it's ready to hit the water. If you have any other questions, feel free to give us a call at 866-41-CANOE, or visit us on our website at 866-41-CANOE.com, and we look forward to paddling with you soon.